Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Today I'm joined by the lovely History with Kaylee. Uh, we follow each other online and we both do ancient history videos and we thought, hey, why don't we do one together and we can have a chit chat about some of our favorite subjects or things that are interested. What are we gonna talk about today? We're gonna to talk about Doggerland. Dargaland. I'm very I, excited. I hadn't heard of it. I mean, until I think about last year. Yeah. Dargaland, I, I hadn't um I hadn't ever heard of it. So I'm I'm com I'm completely new. I'm a Doggerland virgin. And yeah. And you've been to the museum because yes. you don't you live on the other side of Doggerland to me. Yeah, exactly. I live on the other coast. <laughs> yeah. So once upon a time, not that long ago. I yeah. could have walked to your house. Would have taken me a while. But would have taken a while, but it was possible. Yeah, I could have walked to your house, and now we we can't. Oh, but, um, yes. So that's interesting. We're going to get both sides of the. But there's a museum over there. All about. Yeah, it, we so. have the um, Rijksmuseum der Oudheden, which is the National Museum of Antiquities in Leiden, which is like in South Holland, and it had a special exhibition about Doggerland and from October that will end and then it will travel throughout the Netherlands and maybe possibly in the future a uh, same sort of ex uh, exhibit will come to the UK. I hope so because I, I don't know anything so. about it. <laughs> People need to know because especially in England we feel well especially with Brexit we feel quite remote from the rest yeah. of Europe. And it's interesting to think, actually, not that long ago, we were literally on the Europe continent with everybody. Yeah. And it's only because of a series of unfortunate events uh, exactly. and cataclysms that we've been separated. And that's why we're an island. And if that hadn't happened, we would have just been, and there's your cat. So um, my understand this is where my understanding of what Doggerland is. It is what we've called... Uh, the missing chunk of continent that has yes. now disappeared that used yeah. to connect the UK with Europe and yeah. and Scandinavia um, and Scandinavia we were all like a big family yeah, and we were we're one all... like we were one big landmass and yeah we were under like a pack of ice mm. in the last ice age and when that started to melt we were like one big landmass and as time progresses and it started to melt more, the seawater rises and suddenly we had Dogger Bank instead of Dogger Land because we only had like a small island left. Yes. And like six, and like uh, approximately 8,000 years ago, suddenly that island became submerged as well and you were secluded like Britain and Europe. We, were, we weren't friends anymore. Like yeah, the love was over. <laughs> And it's, yeah, it's crazy because I thought, yeah. or I imagined that Doggerland would have been something that was hundreds of thousands, if not millions of years ago in like a continental shift, but it's not, yeah. this This literally happened 8,000 yeah. years ago. Yeah. So close relatively in human history that we were connected. Really close. And they're, they don't know a lot about it because uh, no. it's all under the water now. But when they have done dives and they've got things and they've like they've looked at the human bones and the animal bones, they can find out loads of stuff like what these people were eating and what their health was like yeah. and, and how I they mean, moved. There were mammoths and lions there. What a time! And apparently, it was a bit of a like a bit of a well, it was a, a marshy, banky type of area as it was starting yeah. to. Yeah, it was also a bit of an oasis of food. It was like, a lush forest before yeah. like it started to get underwater. It was like the Garden of Eden of Europe. Like yeah. for real. It was the perfect place to settle down. I think that the mound builders and all the megalithic builders in the entirety of Europe, mm -hmm. because it's all surrounding the landmass of Doggerland mostly, the yes. megalithic builders, the first builders here, I think they were from Doggerland. Like they... Yeah, are the answer the descendants of Doggerlanders because it makes sense. It ma it makes the most sense. We have the oldest henge monument in Europe, which is on the Isle of Stenness in uh, Scotland. It's like the, the, the standing stones of Stenness. It's older than anything there when it comes to henges. It's mm. closest to like the old shore of Doggerland with Dogger Bank, so it makes sense that it all started there a massive land like 
on the on the west side of Ireland that we don't see because like now it's underwater, but it all the mount building structures, the dolmens in Ireland all came from the west to the east. Mm-hmm. So it makes the most sense to me. Yeah. And then even even when like Stonehenge, everybody was mm-hmm. coming from Wales, which was from Ireland to Wales, Wales yeah. to the Henge. But I, yeah, but, but it makes sense that when the Doggerland was disappearing, everybody moved to the you know quick find some dry land and exactly with with them went all of the knowledge of how to build all the stone move the stones and um, yes i would love if they could do some kind of underwater lidar scanning imagine what kind of like if there were stone henges i think it's difficult in in the north sea because like normally you have an ocean and an ocean has like a special surface on like the bottom but the North Sea isn't like an ocean. We just have murky mud. Mm. It's all murky mud in the entirety of the North Sea because it used to be like land. Yeah. <laughs> so um, like you have, you have this beach in England and sometimes when the water gets really low, you can see remnants of like an ancient forest. Wow. It's mind blowing. I'll, I'll send like that forest. It's like insane you can just see how lush doggerland used to be so as we can see i'm going to put an image up here so doggerland used to be roughly half the size of germany apparently and uh as it over the years in the different stages that it was like receding um yeah. it's now 30 to 50 i'm gonna I, I put 30 to 50 in my notes and that could either be feet or meters underwater i don't know um i'm probably gonna go with meters because 50 foot yeah sound i think like meters. a lot there um, so while it was in that mid area there was like 24 lakes and 10 estuaries which is like the posh word for rivers that go out to the sea um yes, yes. and the animals that they found horses mammoths deer lions you said <laughs> yeah they, they found some like bones but maybe like because you could travel more for, to the south and then back to the north. They collected mm. the bones there, but like, it's possible. It's totally possible. The sea levels were rising after the, yes. around the, at the end of the ice age. So the glaciers were melting anyway, and the seas were rising anyway. But yeah. Doggerland got hit by two massive ancient disasters called yes. the Storega, or Storega event. I don't know how you say it. But... Yeah, the Storega slide. Yeah. Dorega slide. That sounds a lot cooler than it was, which was Storega. literally a tsunami. I thought yes. living in this side of the world, we're pretty safe. We're quite boring and we don't have a lot of, I mean, like I've never heard of a tsunami being in this side of the world. Turns out no. very recently in human history, there was um, yes. two, two. Dev- so that kind of made me a little bit nervous because I'm like, hmm, I don't have a tsunami action plan. Wait, y- you're nervous. of my country is below sea level. (laughs) Right. No, you should be nervous. I think my my house is like seven meters below sea level. Standing on my roof won't save me. No. Okay. I would get yourself uh, some snorkels, snorkeling equipment, maybe some deep sea diving. So just get. I have have a snorkel mask. (laughs) Yeah, get yourself some flippers and a snorkel mask because you're going to need it, babe. So the the event was basically an under the sea landslide. Yeah. and a tsunami and it all just went and came down and yeah and it basically flooded everywhere and then it whipped away the chalk the chalky uh land that was so the, the cliffs of dover i went to dover recently which is the very 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 end point of england yeah it's, it's where the dover strait is so if you're going to cross to france that's where you go and um the cliffs of dover are so impressive they are just hundreds and hundreds of meters high and they're made out of this white chalk rock and yeah. i guess that's what the english channel was and it was just incredibly easy to erode and so when when all this disaster came through it whittled away made the english channel and there we are that's why we have that okay oh I'm right another note i'm doing all my facts in the wrong order but here we are so <laughs> 70 meters below the sea 12,000 years ago. What what does that note mean to me? The sea level was 70 meters lower 12,000 years ago. Yes, yes, that, that's that's what that note to I'm, I'm fact was. checking in like yes, yes, you're right. <laughs> there we go. So 70 so the sea level was 70 meters lower 12,000 yeah. years ago, which is interesting when people hunt for Atlantis 
because they need to take that into account because 12,000 years ago, obviously everything was 70 meters lower. So when you're looking at any kind of world map, you need to be starting from that point of view. Um, yeah. Because some people have said, I've tried to say that Atlantis was in the Doggerlands. I well, don't think that's correct. They call it like the European Atlantis because yeah. it's like a disappeared landmass, which I find, okay, we can call it the European Atlantis, but it's not Atlantis. Like, it's not the no. Atlantis. <laughs> it's Plato's not. Atlantis. However, it's, it's our Atlantis. <laughs> yeah, it but I, but it does prove to to people who are complete naysayers of Atlantis yes. that it's possible. It, it's totally possible to have a gorgeous, amazing, thriving ecosystem with massive populations and all of these animals and everything, and it can completely happen and almost be dissolved to history. Like, where's the great story of Doggerland? Like. Yeah, it, it could almost have been lost to history. So I think that it, it proves that it's very possible that around the time of that ice age, does, like natural disasters were happening, sea levels yeah. were moving massively. It's completely possible that we've lost loads of stuff under the ocean. And stories like this, I think, have they have a lot of potential and meaning. And, they, they, yeah. they show that we don't know everything and that we shouldn't jump to conclusions as to, oh, that's not possible or... It's yeah. like, no, it's like it, this shows that it's completely possible and that we don't know what we think we know, mm. if that makes sense. 100%. The Bulling Alarod, it's like an enormous volcanic eruption that happened 12,900 years ago. So like in 10,900 BCE. So after the Younger Dryas, there mm-hmm. suddenly was a massive volcano outburst here in Europe. Yeah. Like that made Doggerland and then afterwards like the Storega slide. Those two disasters completely messed with Doggerland and like our history here. I That's another- insane because I never heard about that volcano erupting. Yeah, so never. hold on. Anyone who, <laughs> anyone who's living on Europe or this side of England or anything um, yeah, we have a history of volcanoes and we have history of tsunamis. Like, who knew? I'm just sitting here, a bit all smug, like, I'm fine. And um, no, we're actually we're not in, fine. It's not just LA that the disaster I feel like the gif in fire. I'm fine. This is yes. fine. <laughs> I'm fine. I'm fine. 9,000 years ago, Dogger Land became Dogger Bank because the land disappeared. The land bridge between us disappeared, but we could still travel to Dogger Bank with boat. And then yeah. to England. So that's there like was the still middle like, island. Yeah. There was still like a possibility to travel from Scandinavia to England or from Denmark to England through Dogger Bank. Also, like, did you know that the Netherlands has dolmens? No. Like, no one knows. No one knows that the Netherlands has dolmens because the ice sheet that covered Doggerland and like the entirety of Northern Europe, that brought with it like glacial erratics, like these big and massive stones. And Eventually, like 5,000 years ago, like almost 5,500 years ago, people started to like build dolmens, like passage tombs here. It's just that we don't have the mounds anymore. We just have the skeletal remains that we call Hunebede, they're dolmens. Mm. I went to one last year and it was like amazing to like touch those stones. They're so old. Old and massive. Yeah, I went to Stonehenge recently and that was that was amazing um, i'm so jealous <laughs> they i've only ever driven past stonehenge when i was a kid and, and it just looks like tiny like a little lego set yeah but seeing them up close in real life and these stones yeah. are old like the stones in egypt almost haven't changed in like i mean they say that they're five thousand years they probably could be ten thousand years old because the stone is just the, the yeah. climate just keeps them Whereas in England, it's rainy and it's very similar to you. So um, the, the yeah. stone is eroding way quicker and they just look yeah. they just look like old sacred like Merlin rocks. Um, yeah. But yes, yeah, Stonehenge is super impressive. And when you see it, you're like, how did how did they move these and transport these? Like this is how? Like what? Yeah. And, and at what point did humans stop like that? Doing that doing that and being like you know what maybe we shouldn't lug this rock 500 miles maybe maybe we shouldn't do that today brad like it was i think it has to do with like hierarchy Mm. 
back in the day, we didn't necessarily have like leaders as in kings and like things like that. We worked together. We had we had a common goal. Mm -hmm. So we came together and we worked towards a common goal. Eventually, we got like hierarchies. We got kings and like pack leaders and people in charge. But when someone's in charge, you don't necessarily want to work that hard for them. You want to work hard for yourself. So like you stop working together as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I always think now I'm doing more and more research into ancient history. I think that stuff is a lot older than we ever think yeah. it is. I yeah. think that the dates that we've put in like mod when we like modern date something, chances are that the that the monument is older, if not the yes. site is older. Well, it this goes like into my personal hypothesis that I'm like working on. Ooh, and what's that your I will hypothesis? keep working on for like the upcoming year. Yeah. Um, radiocarbon dating isn't foolproof. They know that. Scientists know that. And they mm -hmm. don't mind like telling that you know, radiocarbon dating might be wrong. There are other means of dating that we currently don't use that much because it's very expensive and very difficult. But radiocarbon dating doesn't necessarily give you the real date. In Ireland, you had uh, at Carrowmore Megalithic Cemetery, there was a Swedish archaeologist that did radiocarbon dating. And he came with a date of 7000 BCE for a dolmen. Everyone says that's not possible. It was like two two dates. Uh, one that was 7,000 BCE and one was 6,500 BCE. And they call it outliers and like that's not possible. I personally think it's possible. It's very possible. <laughs> Doggerland was possible. still there. Like Doggerland, it was Dogger Bank. It was all like going down at that time, point in time. So it's possible that they started building that dolmen to show that, hey, we're still here. We're doing our thing. We're just relocating our stuff, you know? Like, yeah. Probably. Quick, move and it out. Move it. Move it. Exactly. We're sinking. But move it to the hills. Because of that, like, old date, they say, yeah, what radiocarbon dating isn't foolproof. Then how can you try and tell me that, like, uh, Newgrange or, like, Noth or uh, Stonehenge, how can you tell me that those are the correct dates? Factual. Because it's not factual, because you don't know for sure, because radiocarbon dating doesn't necessarily work. <laughs> yeah. So my personal hypothesis is that what if all these monuments that we see today are reconstructions of older monuments in the same location? Because mm -hmm. we, um, we reconstructed Newgrange, we reconstructed North. What if in like, three, four, five thousand years from now, they stumble upon Newgrange and Noth and they radiocarbon date that shit and they say, oh, hey, it's built in like, what, 1965? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because like, that's oh. the date you're going to get. It's not going to be older that's because you, you reconstructed it. So all these monuments could possibly be reconstructions of ancient monuments, like predating by thousands of years. Yeah. And that's when you say, like, maybe the pyramids are older. It's possible. We just don't know. I think seeing the pyramids up close and seeing Egypt and everything, I was I was unsure whether I just wanted the pyramids to be older or whether yeah. I logically believed that they could be older. And I sway between them, but there is something about the way the pyramids are built and constructed that looks nothing like the rest of the Middle Egyptian constructions Kingdoms. and the kingdom yeah. yeah it just doesn't look like it on the ground and the it's true um the the older 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 egyptian stuff or the stuff that's attributed to the older egyptians they just had a different style they could do bigger bricks and i do think that they were at the older sites and the way that like the sphinx is i think the sphinx is a modern carving and there's restorations on there but the actual yeah. rock that was originally there was was i mean the locally they say it goes back fifty thousand years uh, yeah. Before they started carving the rock, the rock was a very special place because of energy and, and it, to their culture and religion, yeah. it was very important. So I think like the same thing, Stonehenge was probably a place well, before it was a place. And Stonehenge could have been like Woodhenge because you yes. also have like Woodhenge near Durrington Walls. So like it could have been a henge made of wood for thousands of years that kept being rebuilt and rebuilt and rebuilt. And eventually they traveled the blue stones from Wales to 
the location and they set up the first circle of blue stones and they still probably had like the wood hench surrounding it and eventually mm -hmm. they thought yeah this wood ain't gonna work we keep rebuilding let's get stones and so they <laughs> went to the marlboro downs and they got the stones yeah it, it makes total sense that these places have a certain significance and they've had that certain significance for thousands of years so mm -hmm. why not have monuments that kept being rebuilt. Are there pl places like Karnak in Egypt and or in um, all of the Inca stuff that's definitely been built over the older stuff? Like it's the it's the pattern that's yeah. been repeated again and again all around the yes. world. I that's why I would love to see what's under Dogabank because if Dogabank was such a cosmopolitan place of where everybody like was living for thousands of years. Yeah. What could be under there? Like the, the artifacts. What and could we find? But like even this, this is a fist axe. Wow. It's an axe. It's like you see it as a stone. If you were walking around the beach and yeah. you were like, oh, hey, stone. I kick it. This was carved from flint. Mm. This was one of the most important objects they had. But like yeah. the artifacts are insane. Skulls of like huge animals. Like it's. It's just terrifying, the animals they had. In terms of, like, I, yeah, I think before um, I really started to research history, I would had that weird thing where I, I kind of thought people in the past were not as either intelligent or emotionally intelligent as, as us. I just assumed that we're the best and we're the cleverest people because we have iPhones. And now I'm looking yeah, back yeah, yeah. on like... <laughs> I'm like, oh no, actually some people were way more intelligent or in, in tune with the nature and the world. And, and I feel and like it, we're getting dumber as time goes by. Almost yeah, like, this, this the phones, they're fun. Like, absolutely. They're fun. They're handy. They're neat. I don't have to like skim through like hundreds of pages and encyclopedias. Like it's wonderful to have it all in a phone. But as I get older and I'm like turning 30 in November, as I get older, I feel like everyone around me is getting dumber. And that yeah. may be like, it's, it sounds weird, but like, where is like the knowledge? Where are the intellectual people in like the majority? I feel like the majority is not that intellectual anymore. We're losing our, um, how do you say that? Mm, Dutch brain. Oh my god! In, in Dutch, I, I can speak because I go in English, and in English, I can speak because I want to go in Dutch. <laughs> I get exactly what you're saying, though. You're like, I feel like we are collectively losing, or yeah. like IQ or like awareness. It's awareness, yeah. It? And, and and like and, the, mm. our our instincts. I feel like we're losing our instincts because we survived as a species for hundreds and thousands of years. We've developed. We've became we became knowledgeable we became strong we became intellectual and then over time now that we're getting lazy with like the phones and stuff i feel like we're losing that sense of like instinct mm -hmm. my boyfriend and i did like this was one of the reasons that we started like really talking my boyfriend and i didn't like a sort of experiment we i read somewhere that in your sleep when someone like holds a hand over your face but not touching you, but like close enough to be like in your aura. So like in your personal space of the sense of your brain that you would wake up. And I tried this with him a couple of times. And every time I did it, he woke up and he's like, why, why are you trying to touch me? I wasn't, I didn't even want to, but like, I was just testing if it's true. And he kept waking up like annoyed. Why do you want to touch me? Like, how do you know you were fast asleep? I clapped. I made sounds before. Like, I was checking if you were asleep. He was fast asleep and he woke up every time because I be I came into his personal space while he was sleeping. That's a natural instinct that we've had for hundreds and thousands of years, probably back from, like, if we were apes or not. You know what I mean? Like, it goes back mm. that far. We didn't have shelter for thousands of years, for hundreds and thousands of years. We lived in caves, but like, who's to say that a bear wouldn't walk into a cave where you are yeah. sleeping? You need to wake up and like be ready to protect yourself. I think that's Makes one sense. of the oldest instincts we have. Yeah, like the sense, sense of- Even when our parts of our brain are in yes. off mode, we still have like a running security yes. center. That makes sense. And I have yeah. the same feeling where 
you have um, the echo of an old, old technology or skill we used to have. So whenever you, you know, when you feel like, oh my goodness, I just, I feel like someone isn't okay. Or I thought about this person. Yeah. And I feel, and then they call you or you see them and you're like, right. Hold on. That's weird. I was just thinking about you. And I just had a horrible feeling that you weren't all right. And there's nothing that would have made me think that apart from the feeling. And I think that there was definitely back in the humans had an ability to communicate. Yeah. And what we've done is that we've replicated it today with technology like Wi-Fi and the internet and phones. Yeah. And so we can communicate did we've made like a digital version of what essentially yes. we could do and i think we have everybody has this tiny tiny remnant of it but we just brush it off as like that's weird anyway it's just like deja vu yeah just like deja vu i've had deja vu moments so often in my life like i dream and then the next day it happens it's annoying it, it like gets to the point of okay i just want to dream something fun and like make that come true but yeah. like that doesn't happen like deja vu is also like an old instinct i feel like it's your brain and your body letting you know that something's about to happen mm -hmm. to prepare you for it so that when it does happen you know how to fucking handle it because like handling situations can be quite difficult you know <laughs> I'm exactly with you on that one. So I think in, in conclusion, we're getting dumber. And I think that more respect needs to be given to the past. And also yes. another thing that I think the number two thing I think shouldn't happen is assume that everybody in the past does everything for religious reasons or spiritual it's, reasons. I think that there no. is, if, if you don't, let's just not assume that. Let's just take that off there. Okay, they did this at not this Not everything place. is a temple. Yeah, or they built this. What if it wasn't religious? Let's look at yeah. it now. And actually, sometimes things make way more sense when they're functional rather than spiritual or religious. Exactly. And yeah, so the same thing, like looking at Stonehenge or looking at any place in the world and be like, what if it wasn't just a religious thing? What if it was functional? Ooh, interesting. If you so, look at modern times, where do people come together most? Community spaces, workspaces, things like that. Why do we call everything that's old a temple? Yeah. <laughs> what if it's just like, this is our community workspace? <laughs> yeah, it was a wee work. Oh, look at Stonehenge. <laughs> yeah, it, the Stonehenge was a wee work, basically. Yeah. It's, yeah, probably. But so in conclusion with Doggerland, it's, it's hard because there's not a lot of information. There is a lot of speculation because there's no money to no. really go into the North Sea and look for it. And as you said before, the North Sea is basically mud. So yeah. even if they sent things down, you can't see a lot because anything that would be under there, like a hinge or whatever, um, or an obelisk, or if anything was down It would down be there, like buried with silt. Yes. A thick it, layer. It'd be so hard to even find. But things yeah. like that would be interesting to keep finding would be like jewelry because they found that uh denzinovian uh bracelet uh, yeah the denisovan bracelet. bracelet yeah and they that has that like a, dr a drill mark in it which is amazing and they're looking they're comparing the drill marks of the denzinovian 4000 40 000 year old bracelet and they're comparing it with the drill marks found in ancient egypt and it's like there could be just something like that sitting at the bottom of the dogger land that would be like yeah whoa so whether it's tools, jewelry, whatever, um, a new breed of mammoth bone, I don't know. Um, no. But it keeps it keeps my brain active because when people go, what's the point of researching ancient history? A drill hole. Things like with that. drill holes. Things with drill holes. Like, and See? they're quite pristine. Yes. They're quite pristine. Like this, the first one is like 9,000 years old. That's mad. That's mad. It's, and it's it's insane. Yeah, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> I get again all this all our skill set is just being lost. Um yes. yeah, it's crazy. But the things like Doggerland give me hope for loads of reasons because it it shows that we don't know what we're talking about 100% of the time because there are stuff that's been lost to us recently um that we know was there but we can't fully work out uh it makes things like story ancient stories like atlantis have way more credit because it happened yeah. in multiple places so when you have ancient stories in history that predate the doggerland one because the plato story was from before the with the doggerland a tsunami and situation um yeah. it but it just gives them a hot, hot load of credit because their credibility because it's 
feasibly could have happened. So that kind of eggs me on to keep researching more and more about ancient history because it, it's all we're all building a big, 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 big picture of yeah. the world. We're puzzling. Actually. We're doing yeah. a jigsaw. We're doing a That's... jigsaw and we're just we just have like we probably have 25% of the pieces at this point. Or even we don't less. have 75 <laughs> like at least 75 percent we just don't know mm -hmm. it's but insane we will we will we will um, and and yeah and i think it's also important to look back because if things really do happen on a cycle then yeah. it's you know it's important to know if there was a huge underwater landslide because of melting glaciers and then we're heating up the world again or the world's heating up right now yep. what if there was a second one and things and yeah it's all it stuff could happen that, yeah. It's food for thought. Um, yes. A hundred percent. So uh, for people following, uh, watching this and want to follow you, where would they find you on the internet? They would find me on youtube.com slash history with Kaylee. And I've got like all my social medias on Twitter. I'm Kaylee History and Instagram and TikTok. I'm History with Kaylee. History yes. with Kaylee. So if they type yes. that in, they're going to find you somewhere. Because um, yeah, you fans. post a lot. You post regularly. I, you've yeah. been... You have been like working. Um, <laughs> I've been trying. Week. Yeah, you've got <laughs> yeah. such a library of videos and you cover lots of different parts of history as well. You're not just zoned in on one no. area. Um, like I get my, passion, my passion absolutely is like stone architecture from like the Neolithic, but mm -hmm. I do love ancient Egypt and I love like looking into the lives of ancient queens or theories or mm. like new discoveries in the archaeological world. Yeah. Yeah love that um brilliant thank you very much and we, we we'll have to do this again and we'll pick an, another Absolutely. topic that there's maybe yeah. a little bit more to talk about <laughs> because <laughs> Doggerland is um well it's underwater isn't it so it's a bit hard but it's maybe underwater. <laughs> it's underwater but maybe yeah we can we can debate some uh, ancient conspiracy theories or something like that yeah. thanks guys for watching make sure that you like and go follow uh, whichever side you are on there. And we'll see you guys <laughs> in the next video. Happy hunting.